The China we see today was once a nation of pity and humiliation. Her failure was her complacency and lack of exposure. Although her underdevelopment was evident, the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte saw China's future 200 years ago as a world power and warned the world about it. First, who was Napoleon Bonaparte? Napoleon Bonaparte was born at Ajaccio in Corsica on August 15, 1769, as the fourth and second surviving child of Carlo Bonaparte, a lawyer and wife, Letizia Romalino Bonaparte. His father was highly respected by the French. Napoleon became the emperor of the French in 1804 and one of the most celebrated notables in the antiquity of the West. He transformed military organization and training, sponsored the Napoleonic Code, the prototype of later civil law codes, reorganized education, and established the long-lived concordat with the papacy. He was educated at three schools, at Autun, the Military College of Brenne, and the Military Academy in Paris. During Napoleon's years in Paris, his father died of cancer in February 1785, leaving his household in pinched situations. He became the head of the family before he was 16, even though he was not the oldest son. Napoleon attended a military school where he graduated with the rank of 42nd in a class of 58. Napoleon Bonaparte was outstanding in his military career. He was a French military leader and emperor who conquered and dominated much of Europe in the early 19th century. He rapidly rose through the positions of the military through the French Revolution from 1789 to 1799. In 1804, Napoleon Bonaparte crowned himself emperor after clutching political control in France in a coup d'état in 1799. He waged war against various European nations and succeeded, a credit to his military intelligence and strategy. Napoleon led the French army to invade Russia in 1812. It was a tragic invasion where he lost more than 500,000 soldiers out of 600,000 soldiers. Napoleon abandoned his rulership two years later and was exiled to the island of Elba. In 1815, he returned to power temporarily in his 100 days campaign. After an overwhelming defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, he abdicated once again and was exiled to an isolated island of St. Helena, where he died in 1821. He was 51. In spite of his tragic defeat, Napoleon Bonaparte still goes down in history as one of the greatest military leaders and war strategists. About 200 years ago, Napoleon Bonaparte warned the world about China when he said, China is a sleeping giant, let her sleep, for when she wakes, she will shake the world. This statement is opined by some people to be a prophetic utterance about the future of China, but it is also a manifestation of the emperor's political desire. China suffered through wars, societal mayhems, and the revolutions of the 20th century. The world's most populous nation appeared to be plummeting ever deeper into turmoil. History scholars became more enlightened on the reason why Napoleon warned about China. China's existentialism poses a global threat to other nations. A threat not only foresaw in a population but in a potential to rise to global power and recognition when our resources are next. This was what the French emperor saw that made him say, let China sleep. This statement means, let China remain unconscious towards our social, political and economic developments. Let her remain blinded by her complacency. Let China never have the knowledge to realize her global potential. Let China never become the envy of other nations. Let China never know the value in her population. Let China be enslaved and be highly dependent on other nations. 
During the time of Napoleon Bonaparte, China was under an ideology that seemed to have enslaved her. It was the Qin Dynasty, a Chinese cultural ideology that seemed to have blinded her against leveraging her potentials for national success and global recognition. As a strategist military leader, Napoleon understood what would surface if China had discovered herself and woken up during his time. She would have been his greatest threat to his global conquests. The emperor did see the future of China. Yet, it does not negate the fact that if China had woken up during the time of Napoleon Bonaparte, the country would have been his doom. China had spent less than 70 years in isolation before becoming a major global economic influencer. Her self-sufficient ideology was a disaster to millions of her citizens. During the 1950s, China experienced one of the biggest human cataclysms of the 20th century. Mao Zedong's effort to hastily industrialize China's peasant economy failed, which led to the death of 10 to 40 million people. During the 1960s, Mao launched the Cultural Revolution, an attempt to discourage foreign ideologies from thwarting a communist dream, which landed the nation in a social turmoil. China endured a century of social, political, economic subjugation and humiliation at the hands of imperialists. In spite of these challenges, China woke up to her vision. She woke up to realize her potential. She woke up to annex her population to her advantage. She woke up never to be enslaved by other nations. She woke up to be socially, politically, economically and culturally independent. The fear of Napoleon Bonaparte has become a reality. China has woken up. She is no more sleeping. Instead of China to sleep, she has woken up to be a major global hegemon. China suffered from political and economic crucibles for several decades before the prophetic colossus could rise from her complacency and stagnation. Deng Xiaoping began the reformation of China after the death of Chairman Mao in 1976. The reform gave the opportunity to peasants to own plots of land to farm, reduce food shortage and alleviate poverty. It gave the opportunity for an open market for foreign nations to take advantage of their cheap labor, which encouraged the inflow of investments to China. She re-established diplomatic ties with the United States of America in the 1970s, which further promoted international trade between the two parties. Since then, China has experienced rapid economic growth, which gave her the opportunity to join the World Trade Organization in 2001. Today, Chinese goods are everywhere, and the economic lives of millions of Chinese people have improved. According to the World Bank, more than 850 million people have been liberated from poverty, and the country is working to eradicate absolute poverty in the coming years. The world is experiencing the implications of the awakened giant that realized our economic power by leveraging on the capacity of our population. Their factories and labor power produce items that could meet the demands of many nations. China's labor-intensive economy spreads a message to the world that man is an asset where the resources within are utilized and that a high population is a strength, not a weakness. Products such as toys, home appliances, tools, electronics, clothes, shoes, and other manufactured goods are highly demanded by nations, especially the African ones. Chinese construction companies are in high demand in Africa and some other developing and developed nations. The world is warning Africa to be careful of China's strategic neocolonialism through her economic relationship with Africa. Her relationship with the continent in terms of trade in goods and services is capable of undermining Africa's development, promoting dependency. China is seen as a major competitor to the United States and other developed countries because of her labor power to produce goods that are affordable to developing nations. It's a strategy to reduce the influence of American and European products from Africa or developing nations' markets. 
the prophetic statements of Napoleon Bonaparte is fast becoming a reality to the world with Chinese experts, products and services spreading all over the world without guns and without force. With the use of innovative technology, monetary lending to poor nations and producing cheap and affordable goods and services, China is shaking the world as a major economic power competing with the likes of the United States. China's economic power has become the instrument of our global political power. The strength of her political influence manifests as a result of the economic resources she has been able to control within and without. Her influential economic relationship with other nations is fast making her a more powerful political nation. China now contributes to the political decision of nations because of its productive economic resources. China has woken up and she is shaking the world.